What's up guys? This is the Roverman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War. Let's play as the Spanish Empire. So to pick up where we left off, we've got Geronim, Geronimo and Nadal, and we are pushing forward against the Russians to take advantage of our um, current superiority. So we need to destroy this force, and then we probably might want to do a bit of reorganisation with uh, this re reinforcement army advancing up to the front lines. But first of all, we want to hit Stefan Toporov, because his force is probably... The strongest and most coherent in the region but obviously you can see they still have their own problems but there's a couple of good units here we want to try and wipe out so let's take on the russians so they kind of the russians did kind of uh, goof up in a previous episode where they kept on attacking us again and again and again and again and that's result resulted in them uh, losing a significant amount of strength in the in the this part of the world so now we can push forward both with three these three armies plus the army in Crimea although the army in Crimea may end up um, may end up either pushing towards the Don or maybe on towards Moscow itself so we've got too much artillery in this army so our field artillery is gonna sit here in a big line How it's is going to be deployed to fire quick climb, as is tradition. Our infantry are going to line up ready for the advance. Our general is going to get involved. He is bugged because he's got 225 men in his bodyguard, so that's really wrong. But it, whatever. And this, see, I don't know what's going on when the game does this because it's not anything I'm doing. I mean, I'm just playing the game. Uh, but anyway, we've deployed, so let's get our howitzers ready. And let's make sure... Ah. Well, they're both going to hit that mercenary unit, that's not so bad. Uh, so this unit, this army here... Advance. Let's get our cavalry advancing as well because we will be looking to try and wipe out some units. I mean, some of them we can't really do much about, like the 45th, if they decide to rout. Okay, good. So let's get one of these guys to hit the Simonevsky foot guards, because they are intact and they're quite a re relatively strong unit. Most of these other units, to be honest, don't really matter. There's a regiment of foot to the rear that might... Well, we'll need to dig them out of their formation. But apart from that, I think it will likely be the... Uh, we will be witnessing the end of this force. So make sure these units are running. Get all my field artillery to focus on the 10th Regiment. Just bombard them in their hidey holes. Then our right flank can push up quite aggressively. Push up our cavalry aggressively. Because we will want to be ready for the impending storm. Although it looks like a lot of my guns have not really taken the message. And they don't really want to hit the 10th Regiment. There we go. So this Regiment of Grenadiers will be opening the dance. And obviously they've lost a bunch of guys from quick climb hits and originally. General's bodyguard up on the hill... He's not charging, but he's certainly making himself a target. More quick climb coming in. So these chaps up on the hill. Advance up a bit more obviously now. Yeah, it's Eastern European Mercenary and a Grenadier Regiment that are both upset. So let's get our quick climb retargeting. As the infantry... Just gun them down in the open. The militia are routing. So I need to take some of these guys and push them up really aggressively to try and get the that regiment of foot out of their position. Actually, may I keep you guys further out to the rear? There we go. That's what I wanted to see. The militia want to charge. That's their prerogative. You men are cutting down that unit of marines that look like they are trying to charge. But these foot guards... 
will be counter charging which means you guys can push up here the militia wants to counter charge but they can't so their cavalry or their um, fusiliers have deployed stakes to try and confuse matters it's not going to do them any good though So if I charge you guys with this light cavalry unit. As long as you guys don't come back on yourself, which you largely won't. You're going to knock out that European infantry mercenary unit, then go after that grenadier unit. You should really do a, do a real number on those fusiliers. You men push up to threaten the 10th regiment my howitzers retarget the 10th all my guns retarget the 10th because look they're the kind of units i want to go after i'm not so bothered about yeah so we'll lose some men to spikes here it's a bit inevitable but these are fusiliers melee combat is not what they're good at so yeah, you men finish off Simonevsky foot guards then take out the 10th regiment my general's bodyguard can kind of afford to take this hit because now they're so big oh go on knock out the foot guards then go after the grenadiers so I'm hoping this infantry pouring fire into the flank of the 10th will weaken them sufficiently that I can then send my general in to deliver the killing blow. So I can probably stand to halt my fire at will. There we go. Charge the general in. These guys turn fire at will off. Howitzers halt fire. There's Fusiliers, and there's a couple of other units over there I would like to kill. Fusiliers and other good infantry units. Let's get you guys on the move. Well, first of all, let's get you guys to negotiate the spikes. We might have a hidden skirmisher unit. Oh no, sorry, it's these guys, the seven. My bad. I considered them so dead, I didn't even think to... Didn't even cross my mind to think of them as oh no they're still alive it's like no that just that's just a slightly different about to die stage that's what that is there we go so the new men clear out those fusiliers because this will then be quite a significant victory for us because these are elite units that will no longer be on the field because I mean, these are fusiliers and marines you know they're not they're not just bog-standard militia units. They can get up to no good. These are actual, you know, proper elite fighting units. It's like these fusiliers are going to go down. The grenadiers might be a bit tricky. Uh, down to no, we got them. Well, I say that. As long as pathfinding doesn't screw me over. There we go. We should have them. No pathfinding, no! Oh well. We'll get over here and help take up the fusiliers because apart from the units my general's chasing after. There we go. Taken them out. And there we go, lost 285 men. They lost nearly 2,000, nearly that entire force which, have, which has fallen back in disarray. Good. So we have no money. Let's push this army up. Let's take... So I think it's pretty sure this unit. Yeah. Push you guys up to join them. Same with you guys. So we've got a line infantry unit that's at full strength. So let's take Geronim, um, Geronimo Nadal and say okay. For, well, let's take... Because I don't want to get rid of units. Because I want to keep them in... I want to keep um, my strong... My full strength units on the front line. 
So I do need to. I want to do a bit of cycling, like forwards and backwards, where possible. Got a bugged gun team there. Uh, so two light cavalry. I might. I mean, there's no cause to pull bugged cavalry out because it means they got a mass. Like same as that. That like Curiosity Guardian has got 175 cavalry. Jesus. Um, okay, but like that Hussar unit can pull back to Aaron Mazdur, which can be replaced by a line cavalry unit. And you could probably do with more cavalry in general, to be honest. Let's pull a your weaker unit of guard infantry out and replace you replace your we'll give you another line cavalry unit. There we go. So I'll try and do this in order to keep you know, my, re my uh, weaker units are to the rear, um, replenishing and getting up to strength. And they keep feeding um, power, uh, like fully replenished units to the front line. So that's pretty awesome. Um, then our other main... Well, we've also got problems in this region, because we've got the Turkish... Well, the Ottomans are now up to no good, so depending on what happens... In here, because this army could potentially push east and act as the bodyguard of Crimea, freeing up another army to go potentially hit Yerevan, Tbilisi. We do have a force that's on their way to Baghdad. So potentially taking that city might cause them to make another temporary peace, maybe. But the main theatre to focus on is the Americas, because we've taken Quebec, which is excellent. We've taken Niagara. We're on the way to Moose Factory. And this force that moves factory will work their way around to hit Newfoundland. Um, we've also got, well, we've got an excellent expansion opportunity down into this section of the Americas. And then when that starts to happen, we can then declare war on the United States and start to push down the East Coast. And we do also have a force down here. Well, I don't want, you can't leave. We can't yet recruit a militia unit to replace you. But I want to get this army embarked again and hit Martinique and Santo Domingo, which is now ruled by the pirates following the death of the Swedish Empire. So in terms of technol uh, research, Trois Rivières is being destroyed. Sevilla is working on you know, light infantry, which is fine. Salamanca is working on steam pumped land drainage, which is fine because we've got we're maxed out on our philosophy research and our industry research. We can't do the last one because we haven't yet built a steam-powered cloth mill. So they may as well carry on with their agricultural technologies. We're not massively worried about these later game artillery technologies yet. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's okay. So let's hit end turn and let's get some let's get some income coming in. So, you know, Austria is the one that's concerning me. But then again, if I were Austria, I'd start to be concerned because they <laughs> they are starting to be engulfed by a foreign power. Because we're obviously to the west, we're to the south, we're increasingly becoming more, <laughs> more potent in the east. Um, they just really haven't got many opportunities. Well, when, when the war starts, we are going to be fighting on every front. So... That's part of the reason why I'm looking to expand in the Americas as quickly as possible to secure some good economic quick wins. I like how the Russians are all falling back to Laval. So I'm going to probably send an army that direction to make their way towards the city. The Russians are sending all sorts of ships out to interfere in our good work. Yeah, they're still wandering around that section of the world. Chances are any any actions we end up having to fight near Romania, we will have to fight. It's weird they didn't they didn't destroy this that building, but maybe that was within my control zone. Um but any battles we fight in the Romania area, I'm probably gonna have to fight myself because I really don't want to take <laughs> the Cherokee are on their way. I really don't want to have to take um unnecessary losses um against the Russians there. Yeah, as our new new enemies begin to grow in strength. At least know the Cherokee are on their way. Yeah, pirates are going to pirate. So let's see how much money we get this turn. Dun, 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 dun. The number is... Oh my god. 44,000. That's really good. So let's take this rake. 
and I want to get this rake into Dresden. New port emerges. Lose in Pennsylvania. Build a trading port. Let's recruit another sloop to occupy the port. Let's upgrade. Well, hold on now. Let's not get silly. Port blockaded. Not anymore. Okay, so now Paramaribo research a native muskimans. I think this oh, militia is cheaper. Recruit colonial militia, garrison this port, so then this army can freely leave and then, then um, sail on to the next target. Port located in Plymouth. Check the construction tab. So you require territory. It's got new roads. Roads are always good. Let's upgrade Trois Rivières to a craft workshop. Quebec is now under our control. So let's recruit a general here. Rafael Rodriguez. Can you leave Quebec? Excellent. You've got new roads coming. So you guys are going to march down ready to take the war to the Louisianans. You need to replenish or repair ready for a Cherokee attack. So let's do some upgrades here. So we do want to make sure we are maximizing our return on investment from the colonies. But we also want to hop back over to Europe and make sure our armies here are... See, you're nearly replenished, so it would be a real waste to lose a lot of men fighting here. So I see... You can be fortified and build a military governor's barracks. There we go, you've got some more elite troops. Reinforce them all. You've got more... Oh, you're going to... Oh, okay, they're joining this army that's not going to attack the Ottomans, but they're going to support them. Yeah, get them on the way. Um, so if I repair the governor's barracks here, I might. Well, what happens if I move you guys out as is? Minus two. So if I, in theory, I can leave now, but I'm going to wait a turn to repair the governor's barracks, and you guys might march to hit Yerevan or Tbilisi to bring some more pain to the Ottomans. I mean, it will open up a new front with the Russians, but. That's not such a bad thing. Um, let's repair the trading port. Let's get this light galley over to Limassol. Let's get some new road upgrades in the Middle East, because obviously these regions are also worth a lot of money. The town of Suez has almost grown. Which will be here. Sweet. But make sure we keep upgrading the government government buildings because they increase the tax rate in these provinces. So even though we're not making, or even though we might be making the maximum amount of money, we're not actually yet um, earning. We're not actually taking it in as you know taxable revenue. It's got three thousand to spend. Yeah, we're looking after you. Okay, might upgrade you to a craft workshop. Upgrade this logging camp to a lumber mill, because that's just a straight monetary income. It doesn't mean we don't have much money, but I'm foreseeing an action like this being relatively cheap from a battlefield perspective. So I can I can attack this army, hopefully win, without doing too much damage to myself to the point where I don't have to worry about immediately reinforcing or replenishing that army. That would be what I consider a good outcome. There's a rumble of a... Oops! God, I dropped my phone. <laughs> Sorry. There's a rumble of a plane. I hope that wasn't too loud. My God. Um, okay. There's a rumble of a plane in the distance. So let's deploy... Well... Deploy my artillery in the line. Yeah, and then maybe pull the guards out because they are a bit much. So I'm deploying in a non 
non-rushy battle because I want to use my heavy horse artillery to use their devastating capabilities to wipe the enemy out. Um, or at least do significant damage to them before they get to our line at all. God, I, I, I always do that. I always... Oh no, I was looking at the wrong... I was looking at the wrong units when I was deploying my line. Um, I mean, yeah, I'll put some infantry on the flank. It's again, bugged cavalry unit, but I'm not complaining. It's a massive unit of cuirassier guards. First look at line cavalry. So these are... Well, you want you want to think that they are line infantry on a on horseback, which it looks like they are. I mean, I don't know why I measured it. I could just look. Interesting. That's really interesting. It might be quite a good counter cavalry force. Obviously, fire it will off, and they can't dismount. But, you know, kind of, why would you? My general's bodyguard to the rear. These engineers that also didn't get deployed. Just chill out. How it does open up. Okay, let's rock and roll. Not at all fussed about. Obviously, this is like very unnecessary levels of firepower for such a small army but I want to take them out cheaply so I might even just slowly speed up time and watch them okay let's get my line cavalry out on the flank you hit Kamloops you guys hit the fourth light horse obviously we've got unit dragoons out on the flank but my infantry are not going to take too kindly to that. Yep, some good hits. Ah, the Dragoons thought they'd sneak around the house and flank us and hit our cavalry. We hit our guns, sorry. Oh, there they go. Yeah, this is just a bit mean. And they know it. That's why they're starting just to march away. Just speed up time. Let's just let this play out the way we'd expect. Again, I'm not really looking to kill them. I just want them to go away. There goes one unit of cavalry. I mean, to be honest, they could be trying to withdraw. Oh, I didn't get my guys to fire at will. I didn't set them to attack. Although they lost one cavalryman to that charge. Might even. Okay, let's use my line cavalry. Let's push them up. They can have a crack at the general. Although, I highly doubt that they will not stick around for too long. So, line cavalry. That's a huge range, because obviously they've got... I suppose the idea is they've got muskets rather than carbines. But it does make them quite a good, like, good force to have to deal with a heavy cavalry charge. As all the artillery flies in. More artillery. General's bodyguard is upset. <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised they're not routing, to be honest. They've lost a lot of men. My line cavalry just sat here reloading. And fire at the general's bodyguard. Yeah, that's enough of them. And I'm sure, yeah, there goes the infantry. Um, I'm going to be mean and say yes. So I'm not expecting to chase down and kill the general. I just want to kill the infantry. This is the kind of almost petty warfare you have to uh, fight at times just to make sure you win. In the long run, that is. That'll teach you to raid in my territory. I mean, General's Bodyguard's just booking it, understandably. 
There he is. But yeah, he's gone. That army's destroyed. And so that's a classic example. If I auto resolved, I'd probably have lost about 300 men. Whereas I actually lost one. Ah, <laughs> oh, then that happens. Okay, let's watch this as a as a case study. Yeah, I lost 507 men. <laughs> so, and you guys might think, that seems like a bit of a waste of time doing that twice. And I'm like, I think of it as more as, you know, I've cut my cut the corners once. So some of these units can... Okay, so like this unit. Okay, let's push you guys up so I can bring this elite unit out back to our own Mazdu. And I can send a... Oh, I thought I was under the impression I had a more elite unit. I think I got confused with 225 there. Let's send this guard unit up. There we go. So you guys just do just need to hunker down and replenish. So the pirates are blockading us like the scoundrels they are. But let's hit end turn. Ooh, my man is almost toward the pirates. Almost there. I mean, I would imagine Austria won't take kindly to this. Yeah, they're like they're already they're demanding regions, and it's like, no. I'm not gonna take. I'm not going to let you take that region. Um, because it it's just a terrible deal for me, and I like the fact that the Ost Ottomans there seem to be moving troops out of Baghdad, because I can storm the city and just force them into another peace deal again. They aren't going to try and push up to steal my technology, but it's not going to be so ideal for them. Obviously, the Russians are just pouring men down towards <laughs> the front line there. I do really need to send my guys that are currently in Norway east to try and hit Stockholm. But I think I need to build some... Well, so you've got to remember that Norway was a capital for Denmark, so they are a bit more belligerent at not submitting. So, you know, the couple of turns I spend sitting there um, quelling the riots and getting them used to my occupation, it's not a bad thing in the grand scheme of things. Go ahead, Louisiana agent. You're just converting them more to my religion. <laughs> yep, here come the Cherokee. I am surprised they did not raid their way up the, uh, up the territory. Don't worry, we're going to bring the fight to the Cherokee. They come the not quite, not quite sure what happened to the pirates there. Snuck into the cove near Havana. Hmm. Yep, you can combine your fleets, no problem. It's not going to help you. So I'm not really bothered about trying to take out their ships just because. It's never really super worthwhile. Got Agent on the Leeward Island, so safe to say he's not going to move for an awfully long time. Bring the militia up. Alfonso Mendez, get you down to Cinemary. 41,000 this turn, so we had to have a bit of a reduced cash, probably due to things like that raiding and some port blockades. So let's get some upgrades done, get you guys down here. Fine, just hold on to Moose Factory. I'm not looking to spend money at the moment, so I'm okay with... I mean, it even might be a teensy bit dodgy, maybe. Eh, be fine. But I'm not really looking to spend a lot of money on Moose Factory at the minute. So let's take Mr. Lazaro, whose force is now replenished. Actually, you can leave. No, Norway is actually really quite submissive. Let's get these militia in there anyway. You men advance on Stockholm. So continue to build militia. You never know when the Russians are going to be lurking. Obviously our spies are doing some good work. Let's use... Marcio Campos. Push east. Then I can get... Uh, I'll use my reinforcing army to attack Tijina. 
Lost 400 men attacking that gun. For a reinforcing army, they're not really... I need to, I need to create more smaller armies. Really. To act as, you know, counter-raiding and also reinforcements. Let's just get a SAR unit. A Guardia de Corps. I've got to remember, I've got loads of really cool units I just can't recruit elsewhere. So, da -da 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 -da. 12 pounders. Well, you've got plenty of artillery, you don't have to worry about that. Nope, Swiss line will take forever to get here. Oh, so many good units we just can't get. To be honest, this might be a bad endeavour. You just come back to Istanbul. Well, don't come back to Istanbul. Get to about there and I'll make Istanbul recruit. You know, some odd units. And then when they're ready, I'll send them up. Will you build a... Craft workshop. So you've gone east, which means that this force can leave Crimea, sail to Sevastopol, embark aboard ship, sail this light galley, and land it here. So Matthias pushed push onto Yerevan. You guys get back to Crimea. Let's upgrade the infrastructure. We are going to make a push for Baghdad and hopefully use that... Well, well to be honest, I sh I sh what I should have done is not move this army yet. Attack Baghdad and see what happens. Because they could well go for peace after Baghdad, which I think I would probably accept. So you men push up. Let's recruit a ship to occupy Sinop. There we go. So you're replenishing... You're replenishing. You are pr near as damn it replenished. The question is, do I go for Loire or do I use this army to push for Kiev? And I think the answer is push for Kiev. Because if I push this way, it's that's like surrounded by Austrian territory. So I'll need to I'll need to take it sooner or later. But I'm not don't want to rush to take it right now. The the move I think is to hit Kiev and potentially push you guys up to cover. This crossing here, maybe even push east and try and take the Don. Um, up here in Norway, obviously you're stuck. You're building new roads, not going to do too much building in too many places here. Although, a couple of upgrades will probably be good. Let's hop back to the Americas, because we know we've got the Cherokee knocking on the doorstep. We're knocking on the door, not the doorstep. Do some reinforcements. Maine can get better roads. So can Fort Nashwack. Let's upgrade the farm. Upgrade the mine. No, don't upgrade the mine because we're going to take... Take this army under Diego de Cordoba and go hit Wam Suta because they're on our land. So we're going to push them back. They are the invaders now. And looks like a lot of their fighting formations are actually pretty depleted. So, let us attack and destroy this first Cherokee offensive. So we've got... Well, they've got lots of bowmen, which isn't a massive problem. We've not got super strong cavalry, but, you know, even the basic cavalry is not bad. So let's deploy our artillery back on the raised ground. Take our infantry, form a good line. Maximize our firepower. Let's take our skirmishers up front. Because they might actually be useful against the native factions. Deploy the pikes behind certain parts of the line. Deploy the cavalry out on the flanks. Although we do still want to probably run our Provincial Cavalry up. So all my artillery is going to be focusing on the Chief's Bodyguard or the Mounted Tribal Gunners. I'm happy with either. So these men are all hidden. Let's 
So where are the bad guys? Charge the tribal gunners. Hello. A native bowman. Hello. Warrior society. No sir. Run. They fired a volley but it whiffed. You men chase the native bowman just to see who else comes out. Come on. Run into my skirmisher line. They're dying to meet you. So you could be running into a trap, but it's pretty... It's a pretty good bet. Lost two cavalrymen there, but the hope is that my frontiersmen fire! First light foot. I've also gone. Ah! They're all over here! And they're all really cross. The skirmishers fall back to the high ground. You're okay chasing down a unit of bows, because you might get them to break. The artillery needs to bombard some of these units. The idea is that, because they're deployed on the higher ground, they might actually fire over my men's heads fairly well. So they're, they're shattered, so try and run down another unit of bowmen. There's a lot, there is a lot of bowmen out here, so one provincial cav unit will only do so much. Yeah, and they're just converging on him like white blood cells. Let's get my cavalry out of there. Yeah, they're doing a lot of... Yeah, they're engaging them pretty handily. Yeah, understandable. But my artillery is getting some good hits. No. Come on, are you guys coming in? I know we've attacked you, but we're skirmishing you, keeping you exposed, and my gunner's having a great time. I'll even push my line up a bit like that. That's not all of them, but this is why we've got our glorious pikemen. So should they make contact with us, our white-coated ranks will make sure they do not succeed. The garrisonated bowmen are chasing down my routing cavalry, so the 22nd will put them to task. You men attack the garrisonated bowmen that are about to charge my cavalry. Oh, see, they're running up to my cavalry. And now they're getting charged again. Okay, good. Now we now we're cooking. So I might get my pikes out of the way. But I'm curious if the if my um not my tactics. Obviously, I'm just a dumbass. But this kind of stuff can work. Medicine men are routed. Garrisonated bowmen are routed. You guys are going after. More bowmen, so there's a, this unit might potentially go the same way as the other units, but it's worth doing. Because I could probably catch a couple of good units in the open. So let's take our line, push it up. Do some good damage to some bows, but then book it. My cavalry's come back. Okay, so you guys might harass and chase down the garrison native bowmen. Yeah, my cavalry's acting as a magnet, so let's get my cavalry out of there, get my pikes up a bit. Gone 20 seconds, you've reloaded. Ah, pour a volley into the 
22nd. Go on. The Generalissimo is right here. Oh god, there they all are. <laughs> Pikes can counter charge, get one set of guns to hit that unit of medicine men, but the rest of my artillery bombard that big block. You guys continue to chase down the garrison native bowmen because you got to kill some of them. There we go. So that Nate Medicine Man unit decided that uh, chasing down my cavalry was not a useful way to spend their time. These garrison native bowmen are going down. Spanish Infantry de Marina doing their glorious work. There they are. They've poked their heads over the parapet. And we have decided we do not like their antics. You chase down some medicine men, because medicine men are good units. Let's make sure we retarget this set of guns to somewhere in the center again. Yeah, just chase them down, do damage. Medicine men are a good unit, so always take the opportunity to kill some medicine men. The native warriors are dangerous ish, but yeah, pikes, don't care. You chase down the bowmen. Let's push up this infantry to act as a bit of a blocker. Charge my pikes in because they think they've made landfall against my line, but it's not going to help. Oh, you might kill that garrison native bowman unit. That'd be pretty awesome. To... Garrison native bowmen, send my pikes, because my cavalry are going to be busy chasing down the enemy. All my artillery engage the... there it is, General's bodyguard. Everyone else has critical jobs in thinning out the Cherokee ranks, because the fact that they were depleted either means that they've got issues in combat, or issues in the scenario, or they can't afford to keep a large standing army. So by annihilating the troops that are on station now... I mean, I want to kill the native bow units. It's ripe to be killed. My pike should have a great time against both those units. Oh, go on, there's only six of them. Five of them. Pike char Pikes charge the medicine men, new men fire them off. Because they'll immediately go after that warrior society unit. The chief's bodyguards booked it by the looks of it. Go on, knock out that last garrison bowman. Go get the warrior society. Yeah, my pikes were all will always do super well against the garrison native bows. They have don't well the idea is they're bowmen, they don't necessarily have melee training. Oh go on, that's one more warrior unit taken out. So then go after any of those bowmen units, I suppose. Medicine men will likely route. Just do good work. My artillery fire can stop firing. Well, my artillery can stop firing, not my artillery fire can stop firing, because... Sounds funny. Damn right, we're going to continue. Go after one of these units over here. My general try and go after one of those units. done a real number on the 
Cherokee here. One last bowman there. He's gone. The edge of the map is just over here. Yeah. There you go. So the only units left are the units that are all the way over here. So we'll try and we'll chase after them, but I don't think it's going to work. We are light cavalry, notionally. Well, pretty much. Yes. Yes. But yeah, nah, they're going to be fine. And they're a nice little cluster of troops. There we go. So they're knocked out. And that means that we now have a... We are well positioned. What? That's not weird at all. So you're going to have to march back to Niagara. Replenish. You're going to knock out that unit and push on to Michigan Territory. This force want to go straight down and start to threaten the Cherokee. Then once we're pushing down and hitting the... We've taken Detroit. We're probably going to then launch this army into Annapolis and hit the United States. Because I don't think they'll have any significant allies that we have to worry about beyond... The Inuit might be frustrating, but... I mean, they might... Well, no, we don't own... So I have seen the AI, like, cross this somehow. Um, anyway, doesn't really matter. Yeah, not bothered about the Leeward Islands, because they're... I'm not going to buy a... Um, I'm not going to buy a vessel just to traverse that. Uh, it's got 24 hundo. Yeah, let's upgrade. Ooh, gem mine. To a deep... Gem shaft. Let's do it. Okay, four more turns till we get some more techs. Then we probably want to go to Istanbul here with Carlitos Quiroga and hit Baghdad. I mean, I don't. It says, ooh, see, oh, look at that. So their con control zone, we can avoid it. But I don't know whether we'll fight without this guy. No, we won't. We'll have to fight this army. But let's take Baghdad, because we could probably use that to get peace with the Ottomans. Again, it was kind of short-sighted, but to move this guy, we'll probably just move him back and land him to attack Chukask in the Don. Um, but yeah, if we take Baghdad, that'll really, that might cause us to make a proper peace with the Ottomans, because they'll really not be able to um, withstand us then. So we are going to have a reinforcing army coming in, but to be honest, the main army good chunk of it's Tsar, lots of weak cavalry units. I think we'll be okay. We have a lot of cavalry, which will actually be to our um, benefit, and they have no actual defences around the city, so it'll be a conventional battle. So let's take them out at Baghdad and try and force a force of victory. We don't want to leave them any opportunity to um, raid our lands. I mean, this will probably cause us to join or to end up in a war with Persia because that's usually what happens when you take a territory near Persia is they suddenly become super aggro. So this is going to cause us issues in the longer run, but that's for future me to worry about, not current me. So because we have a truckload of infantry, we are going to advance. So I'm going to deploy my two guns here firing straight ahead. I want to deploy one gun here because that reinforcing army that's coming in should be coming in from the left so let's split split the cavalry up Put my, get my general involved so they've got mortars which we might need to be careful about ah to hell with the where the reinforcements come in Let's just kill them. All of our artillery is focusing on their howitzers, which is exactly what we want. So we're pushing on a broad front. Our guns here that aren't currently unlimbered are now going to unlimber. Yeah, so we're focusing on bombarding. Yeah, it was the mortars here, so actually I might run my infantry. But these guns are focusing straight for these mortars. 
knocked a guy over, didn't kill him. Oh no, he... no, he's fine. So we did manage to hit the mortar straight off and knock one out, which is pretty good. We could f feasibly rush and destroy the artillery with a cavalry charge, but I don't think that's necessarily the best idea. So let's push. Aha! There's our azar. Keep pushing in my right flank. Keep pushing it in. Armenian archers. Let's bring a unit of light horse to the centre. Understandably, they're upset by the volley fire. These men push, you men advance. Yep, yeah, it's one unit dealt with. Bashi Bazooks, eh? Ooh, carcass shot trying to get my howitzers. Mamluks getting involved. Charge the Bashis with my Hussars. This is going to be quite a chunky melee fight right here. Okay, let's pivot. Immediately pivot. This line to fire into the back of that action there. Let's bring a unit of Curassier over here as well to support. Let's bring a unit of Colonial Light Cavalry around the rear. Same with my General's Bodyguard. Get a bunch of artillery to attack ground in this area rather than attack. My light hussars are not going to be very good. So the idea of... There we go. By attacking ground, we can do damage to these enemy units without necessarily killing our own. Although we have maybe caused our own to rout. We've caused a lot of enemy units to rout. Deploy this regiment of foot into square. You guys get out of the way. Let my line get to work. Mamluk's chasing down my regiment of horse, which is reasonable, but I'm going to chase them down with my heavy cavalry. So the hope here was that this line unit could fire into the backs of all these guys in melee. Out of the way. So the Azars are upset. I'm hoping these Azars might actually come back. So I'm not. So I think they've run cavalry accidentally into these. Yeah. So attack this armory building. The Curacier are going to take care of the enemy there. I mean, they're all routing, so... You men push up to there. You men push up to here. I'm not entirely bothered about chasing people down. I'm more inclined to... Yeah, hit them... So they might have chased off a unit of my cavalry, but my cuirassiers are going to tear them a new backside. So I'm hoping to destroy this building to potentially kill... I mean, those Bashi Bazooks are shattered. And... I'm not quite sure where these garrison Islamic swordsmen are trying to attack. They spread out nicely though. They've surrounded a couple of units, but if I, as I'm bringing in my left flank to provide more fire support, I'm free to commit my right flank into supporting the attack. So I'm not quite sure what I'm doing here. 
So these guys are trying to engage the armory building, but let's just let these guys fire at this huge cluster of men. Janissary Musketeers are getting involved, but the garrison, yeah, I didn't think the garrison Islamic Swordsmen would be sticking around that much. They're down to one third capacity. Form line. Okay, right. We got action. So these units that didn't really have a job. The new front line. Yeah, hit the armed populace. You guys are going to knock out the general's bodyguard. I don't know. So that we killed that general and the other general pretty simultaneously. You men all run. We're gunning down that unit of camel nomads. So the colonial light cavalry looks like they are going to rout the general's bodyguard, run into the horsemen. The hussars have routed the armed populace, so they can also charge the general's bodyguard. The Mamelukes have been trying to skirmish away from my cuirassier for an awful long time. And it hasn't worked. One gun hit them, another gun hit the camel nomads. You guys haven't been firing, just engage the camel nomads. Let's push this infantry up. Both these cavalry units should win against the enemy. Well, I might run one unit of infantry in for support. I mean, to be honest, you guys attacking the armory would be a dead cert because it looks like there's a camel gunner stuck in there. So let's take. Let's push up, keep threatening the right flank, and let's slowly start to transition more men. To the left, well, slowly, he says, by running loads of men over onto the right flank. Running loads of men over onto the left flank. Yeah, there we go. If we destroy the armory, they all die. Two of these guys. These are Armenian archers and Sekban Janissaries. Not bad troops. But I mean, we've got some pretty elite, chunky infantry by this point. Everyone target the armory. Don't bother with all your own stuff. There's a garrison Israeli unit back there. But just keep pushing up because got to keep threatening got to keep threatening that unit otherwise I'll start to just chase down my cavalry which I really don't want them to do. So it looks like melee has been joined on this flank but it's a weak unit of archers and some sec bands are involved but they've not hit the units next to them so they are just going to get hit by um, musket fire which has obviously caused them to rout. So push these men up on the left flank. I want to see this Wait a minute. So what's 7 damage 72? There's... Oh, there's two halves to the armory. I see. Yeah, get these guys to charge the gunners. Again, because this is a reinforcing army. Try and kill some stuff. Yeah, the artillery's not hitting what I want them to hit. So I have to attack ground, like, nearby. So you're attacking the left. It's like, no, don't worry about that. Is this 
keep these cavalry ready to face down that unit of Isoreli. This unit's having a great time against this unit of Janissary Grenadiers. So much so I'm going to pivot you guys so you don't shoot the men in combat. Bring the Colonial Light Cavalry in, ready to hit the 7th, because they are going to break. There they go. You men cease fire. Come on. Although, actually, are they... They're all dead anyway, by the looks of it. Mostly. The ones on the right-hand side are dead. Oh, my cavalry route routed from... Um, so misses from the Isoridi unit caused my cavalry to rout. Fair enough. I don't think they're going to be around for too much longer. So you men, cease fire. Try do that because part of me wonders if it them them being alive might cause the the game to get stuck. What? Sekben Janissaries. Bring you guys around. Yeah, good. Continue. Uh, you guys fire well off. Let's let my... Let my hussars careen past and deal with them first. Artillery cease fire. Go get him. Well, they might actually cause... Okay, these guys... Keep attacking the enemy there. And there we go, some lovely, lovely Sekban casualties. Ah, they routed. There we go, and the, the armory has been destroyed and the camel gunners have been killed. Excellent, good stuff. So we've knocked that army back. Baghdad is ours. Diplomacy, Ottomans. Peace and trade. Good stuff. Get back, you devils. So they don't they don't mind us. If you've not got a university, you do, but let's get rid of it. The army can replenish. Are we trading with the Persians? We are armed, we're very friendly. Good stuff. Okay, so Baghdad needs to be um, expanded upon and supported because the Russians might be coming towards us from Ardabil. So this army to the north here is probably going to be redeployed to hit Chakask. Potentially hit Tarki and Ardabil. Um, but apart from that, I think I'm going to hit end the episode here because then I can uh, hit, an, hit end turn at the start of the next episode and off we go. So yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you next time for the continuing adventures of Spain. Cheers, everyone.